Um, this next uh, short video is on residential construction for HVAC, which is uh, air conditioning and heating. Um, two, um, I'll touch on two areas, uh, uh, humidity and uh, split systems. Um, first of all, with humidity. Um, if you can satisfy uh, removing the humidity out of your home, um, then it, it allows your air conditioning system not to work as hard. So um, uh, there's two ways of doing that. Uh, one is actually buying an air handler that has a built-in dehumidifier in there, and there, it is a little pricey for that air handler. The other one is um, you can just simply buy a dehumidifier and it actually gives you more flexibility because you can actually place that dehumidifier any place in your home. You can have multiple dehumidifiers. Uh, it's really nice, um, especially near closets or whatever, so you don't get any mildew in the, inside the closets. Plus, it just climatizes your whole space a lot better. Um, with a dehumidifier, you can um, you can regulate that by yourself or automatically. You can set the dehumidifier to a certain certain humidity, and it will stop and just cycle accordingly. Or you can run it just when you want to by just turning it on and off. Uh, it's really nice because if you use um, um, a little gauge, uh, they'll it actually tell you what the humidity is uh, currently. It'll tell you what the high was, what the low is what your current temperature is. They're just a nice little gauge you can buy from Amazon for like $12. So with a dehumidifier and that gauge, all you have to do is you, you just monitor that gauge. So if you come into your space and you see that the humidity is 60 or 65%, all you gotta do is just turn on your dehumidifier. It'll probably run for maybe an hour, uh, hour and a half, and so You'll, you'll immediately see that the humidity dropping and you um, and then when it gets down to whatever you're comfortable with whether it's 40% or 35% humidity then you can go ahead and turn it off so basically uh, it's, it's our, it, it will remove the humidity out of your home so that way let's just say if, um, it's summertime and you've got your air conditioned so basically the the AC only has to cool has to cool the air. It doesn't have it does not have to remove the moisture from your inside of your house. So all it has to do is run that um, that lower humidity. Now that you've ran your dehumidifier, you run that uh, that nice uh, dry air goes through the coils of the air handler and all it has to do is cool the air and not remove moisture. So basically you can drop your temperature in your house a lot quicker uh, because you've already addressed the issue of humidity. Um, so you're um, just, uh, just for general discussion, you're, you're, uh, you're, it's, we're in Florida. so. <laughs> So it's very, it's very easy to understand humidity. Um, it's much more comfortable in the winter in Florida than it is the summer because of humidity. So if your inside of your house is more comfortable because of humidity, then uh, it's going to be um, that much more easy to, for the, your air conditioning system to, um, uh, to make it that much more comfortable in your home because you've already removed the humidity. Um, the, then the nice thing about that is, is that if you did nothing else and just had a dehumidifier in your house, that would be huge right there. Because whether it's winter or summer, you would be removing uh, that hum that humidity. Because right now it's winter, so but I come into my office and it's 60% humidity in here. So um, and it's not summertime, and so. I can remove the humidity in my office and bring it down to 40-35% humidity and it's very comfortable in here. My, my heat or my AC does not have to run very long. So it's just that lower humidity is always much more comfortable uh, space, whether it's outside or inside. So anyway, um, uh, so just, but there, if you if you go ahead and um, there's an additional benefit 
by having a dehumidifier is that you can actually increase your tonnage for your units. Um, so I'm, I'm big on oversizing AC units. Um, uh, just to give you a little brief uh, AC 101 kind of thing. Um, AC contractors design systems for their homes so they kind of like say it's a balanced system to where your um, the they they size the unit let's just say for, say for instance it sizes out at at four tons so they they know that um, for it, for that size tonnage it's required because it's going to take that um, it's going to have for that unit to run and and uh, so that it's going to it's going to take so long just to be able to remove the humidity so they size the units that way so that um, the unit runs for a, a fairly long time because as it's running the, the air is, is being drawn across the coils the, it, it, the moisture is being removed by the coils that are in the air handler and as it's being the moisture is being removed then the air is also being cooled so it takes a certain time for the air handler to do that so the air handlers have to run a certain length of time okay so if you um, and but if you oversize the unit and say make it a four and a half ton then well, the AC contractors will tell you your your house will be cold and clammy, and it's true if you do not use a dehumidifier. Um, and because what it'll do is the air will cool faster than it will, and it won't have time to remove the humidity when you oversize and don't address the issue of you uh, of of humidity. So they're absolutely right. You will have a cold and clammy house if you don't address the humidity. Okay, but, but let's get back to you addressing the humidity. So basically, okay, so let's say for instance you ran your, your dehumidifiers and in a large house you could have two of them, one on each end, and you can go ahead and run those units, drop the humidity. Now let's say it's summertime and it's, uh, let's just say it's 96 degrees outside with the same amount of humidity but inside your house you've dropped your humidity down to about 40 percent so now your the air like I said <clears throat> excuse me only has to uh, cool it, your, your, de, your air handle only has to cool the air so you've oversized it which means that it can cool the air faster and it won't run as long well that is the big equation right there it will not run as long. So if you're talking about efficiency and your electrical bill, which is basically the bottom line, because you're actually doing this not only for comfort level, but for, for the, your electric, uh, electrical bill. So, you know, the big thing is like, okay, the SEER ratings, um, high efficiency ratings on these units. They're good, okay? but. It, it, whether it's a 14 or a 16 SEER or wherever, whatever, it's like, yes, they're efficient units, but they're still going to have to run a fairly long time just to remove the moisture from inside your house. Now, if you, like I said, you address the humidity, so now your AC, the air, the AC system does not have to run as long. It will cool your house quicker, so um, it won't, it, it won't be, you know, your meter won't be just like spinning crazy. It will be off. Okay, so basically, this is a great comparison. Okay, so if I have the highest SEER rating on a unit and it runs for a longer period of time, or do I have, say, a lower SEER rating of, say, 14 or whatever, and it hardly runs at all? <laughs> you don't have to be, you don't have to be a, a, a you know, a rocket science to understand that when 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 systems or <clears throat> devices aren't running they aren't using electricity so basically if you can drop the temperature inside your house from 84 to 78 in an hour because it doesn't have to remove the humidity your your AC system which is the largest user of electricity 
um, will not be running. You talk about high efficiency for your electrical bill. <laughs> okay, all right. Not only that, there's a, there's side benefits. You you first of all you um, remove you, your your space is more comfortable because it's it's uh, it's drier air and it's more it's more comfortable. The, and that's the first thing. Second thing, your unit doesn't have to run as much. Your electricity bills are lower. Okay. All right. There's a there's another element. Oh, the if you if you entertain if you have um, a large family functions like I do, <coughs> excuse me. At my um, uh, we'll do Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, uh, whatever it might be. When where will you have 40 people over your home? Okay, so if your system is designed where it's just um, just like minimal, um, all right. Where it's designed just for uh, its own capacity and that and not much more. So basically, because it's oversized, now the unit can actually is, is actually is is designed to actually do more. It condition more, drop the temperature more. Um, it can actually handle. Uh, 50 people being in your home and make it comfortable in your home instead of just constantly running and not uh, cooling your temperature. I'll give you a quick example. Okay, so all right, so if you've got a system that is that, that, that say the we'll, we'll stick with the four tons. Okay, so you got 50 people in your house. It's 96 degrees out, and you want it comfortable in your house, um, and the the AC contractors have used this kind of equation or or this factor um, in their designing units. It's 20 degrees. That means that um, on a standard design system, you're only going to get be able to reduce your te uh, your temperature by 20 degrees. If it's 96 degrees, the lowest temperature that you can get out of your unit is going to be 76 degrees. I don't care how long that unit runs, it will only be able to drop at 76 degrees, which means that unit will constantly be on, constantly trying to, say for instance you set it at 74, it will constantly run, uh, stay on and never shut off. Because it's trying to get you that 74 degree temperature, but it can't because it's designed for that 20 degree differential. Okay, so but now let's take the other uh, part, that other part where I said well, you've over designed it by adding a half a ton. So by being a ha uh, a four and a half tons, now instead of a 20 degree differential, let's just say you get a 25 degree differential or maybe even a 30 degree differential. So let's just say, okay, so it's 96 degrees out and I can drop it 30 degrees. And, and, and the unit has that much capacity because it's a very, it's a much more larger system. It can, it can actually do more. It can actually um, uh, uh, reduce the temperatures more. And it, <clears throat> you have that added feature where uh, you, you, you have those three elements right there where it's, um, you got rid of the humidity by dehumidifiers. Um, they don't have to run as long. And if you have large functions, it, the unit can actually maintain your house at a colder temperature and, and a more comfortable temperature with a lot of people in it. And so you don't ha have a lot of people walking around your house that are sweating because it's 80 degrees inside your house and it's 98 outside. And so, um, yeah, you want to have your house at 75 degrees inside because you have a lot of people in your house and you want them very comfortable. You only do this once or twice a year. You want a very comfortable house. Oversize your unit by, uh, by uh, at least a half a ton. Okay. The AC contractors, it, you'll, be, you'll be amazed. If you go ahead and price it, do, crunch the numbers, all right? So let's say, you know, a four, th a four uh, ton unit might cost, let's just say, four grand. And so they, uh, this is for a brand new house. So you're... Uh, so you ask the AC contract, how much more would it be for a half initial half a ton? 
I bet you anything it's going to be like 500 bucks, 600 bucks for an extra half a ton. And what that does, I've already described it to you, okay? That's a, that's a no-brainer to me. If he says 500 bucks, all right, all right. So the other thing I want to talk to you about on this AC 101 video, now it's a little longer video than normal, but it's a lot of material. So um, you uh, uh, split systems. This is huge. Okay, I don't care what size house you have. Split systems are amazing to have. You 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 want to do it sleeping versus living. Okay, so you have two air handlers, two compressors. The two air handlers and all of the ductwork are designed. One it goes to all of your sleeping areas, your bedrooms, and, and maybe a bathroom, whatever like that. And your your uh, your living room, uh, all your living space is can off of another air handler. So it, what's really so what you do is is that they uh, you will only run each unit according to day and night. So living living versus sleeping. So I'll give you a little quick scenario. So uh, if you've got, uh, say this, we'll stay with a four-ton unit, uh, a single four-ton unit. Okay, and let your, let's say your house is 3,500 square foot living area. All right, so this four-ton unit is conditioning 3,500 square foot of living space, and it may be just you and your wife in the master bedroom, and it's set at, say, 78 or 76 degrees. The other through you know 3400 square foot of the of your house is getting conditioned for no reason for eight hours every day while you're sleeping you know eight hours every night okay well all right for as long as you live in that house you're conditioning all this wasted you talk, talk about efficiency and your and your electrical bill okay so you've got this massive four ton doing all of that as a, a single ton if you split it uh, you can sleep comfortably at night knowing that the, only the bedrooms are the ones that are being conditioned. The rest of the house is not. Okay, <clears throat> a little example. So um, you're, you, you set the bedroom temperature at 76 degrees. You set your living room air handler at, say, 82. The 82 one hardly cycles at all during the night. The 76 or whatever in your bedrooms cycles. Gives you, you can sleep comfortably knowing that the rest of the house is not being cooled while, during the night. It flips during the day. So in the daytime, you turn your bedrooms up to 82. You set your living space uh, to 78. So your living space is now nice and comfortable and you're going about your business and in and, and, and your living space of your home knowing that your bedrooms are not being conditioned at 78 degrees it's set at 82 degrees and you can go around your house and you're talking about efficiency in electrical bills your air your bedrooms which are not being used during the daytime are not being conditioned as cool as the rest of your living space so <laughs> anyway this is i love i love discussions about um acs uh, there's one last thing i'll touch on and this gets a little technical where it talks about um, making sure that your AC contractor knows what they're doing about static pressures. Okay, so you want to have what they call a zero static pressure in your, in your room. You don't want positive or negative pressures in your room. So basically when you have a supply duct, and let's just say there's no returns in, in, in this room that I'm, where I'm standing in. There's no returns, just supplies. So what that does is it's just pressurizing this room like an like an airplane, you know, the inside of an airplane where it's pressurized. So basically, it's it's forcing air into this room and there's no outlet, like no return airs or anything. So it's just it's pumping, it's pressurizing this room. All right. It, it, um, first of all, it's going to be it's not going to be uh, healthy because you're. You're just pumping air in this room and it's not being recycled. That's one thing. The other thing is, if there was any kind of like um, uh, moisture in this room, mildew would be a serious problem because mo uh, mildew loves two things, moisture and pressure. That's why walk-in closets and stuff like that are now are required to have return air ducts. 
because before they would have a supply into a walk-in closet, but there would be no return. You would be pressurizing that that closet, and there'd be huge amounts of you know you open up your clothes and oh my, you look at the back wall and there's all this mildew, or your, show, your shoes have all this mildew in there. That's why it's required to have return air ducts in walk-in closets so that it keeps that that static pressure at zero and not a positive pressure where you're pressurizing, okay? So anyway, it's very important. A lot of systems, they don't have, um, they don't have enough return air. You want to make sure you have return air in every single room so that you're supplying your air handler with air to feed all the supply ducts. So you want a balanced system to where you have all these return air ducts that are feeding the air handler and then of course you have all your supplies going out and you just just work with your AC contractor and and make sure they can actually do a static pressure test at the air handler to make sure it's zero so that the air coming in, in from the returns matches the air going out from the air handler it's very important so I hope you've enjoyed uh, AC 101 